Okay, um, so thank you for watching this video. I, uh, my name is Alfredo. I am a video producer, photographer, and painter, and um, a vegan as of, I don't know, January? Uh, one of the problems with the ve being vegan is that everything is kind of expensive, especially if you want to buy prepared foods. So um, I've decided to, uh, we're gonna do it ourselves because we don't need, need the big corporate giants to be vegan. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, the main ingredient that we're gonna to utilize is called vital wheat gluten. And what is vital wheat gluten? Wheat gluten is, um, it's made by getting the whole grain of the of the of wheat and then running it through water uh, so everything dissolves except for the protein part of it. So meat being basically protein protein and fat, uh, we we're gonna utilize this by making the protein be the wheat gluten and the fat is just oil. Um, again, I don't work a lot with recipes. Um, so I like to work with ratios, and the, the, a good rule of third ratio for wheat gluten is you want three parts wheat gluten, one part something else. And uh, the first thing I tried is to do wheat gluten uh, and then reduce it with chickpea flour. You can also reduce it with mashed chickpeas, lentils, some people do it with rice, some people do it with oat bran. Um, Sweet potatoes work really well. You can reduce it with tofu. And if you reduce it with tofu, it'll make a delicious kind of chicken substitute. And then, um, so we reduce it that way. And then everything else is just seasoning. So as far as seasonings go, we are gonna utilize, in this case, paprika, pepper, soy sauce. Um, this is a staple of uh, vegetarians and, and vegans. Uh, it's called uh, nutritional yeast. And nutritional yeast kind of smells like a little, a little bit like butter or like butter popcorn. And as a matter of fact, most of butter popcorn is this stuff. It's not butter. We are gonna put a little bit of cumin. Cumin gives it a little bit more of a meaty kind of flavor, a little bit more of a, yeah. Uh, and like, and with everything I do is uh, roasted garlic, um, uh, and then um, onion powder, which in this case is just the fancy um, granulated air-dried shallots. Uh, but usually, so. And what are we gonna reduce it with? Uh, we're gonna reduce it with none of the things that I mentioned before. We're gonna reduce it with something with uh, beet puree. So how do you make beet puree? You grab a bunch of beets and then you, you steam them. So you do a double wall kind of situation and then you put some water in it and then run it for like, I think 40 minutes. Um, and after that, all of the water that you boil this thing with is gonna be red. And we are gonna keep that beet water because that beet water is gonna give it like more of a red coloring to our, to our uh, fake meat. And it's gonna be kind of more, when you cut into it, you'll see that kind of redness to it. And it's gonna be watered down if we only use the puree and then we use water for the situation. Again, I don't do recipes. It's all about texture. And you're gonna see the texture as soon as we start working with this. So let's start with a cup and a half of wheat gluten. And some people see that. I don't, I don't see the use. You're gonna be needing it anyway. And if you get a little clump here and there, who cares? Um, we have the we have the um, the the wheat gluten there. So let's combine our um, our dry ingredients. And again, I'm just eyeballing it here. We're putting some cumin in there. Putting some pepper. Put a lot of pepper because pepper is one of those things that gives meat their kind of distinctive flavor. If you think about it, like basically meat tastes like what you put on it. So we're putting all these things that we normally would like do on a rub or a seasoning. I, uh, for example, if you wanna save yourself all this trouble, just get a, a spice mixture that is kind of like a jerk and a jerk will do it. We're gonna put some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast gives it again, like a buttery, cheesy flavor. And when you put it on fake meat, it gives it kind of that, that aged 
kind of flavoring. Uh, soy sauce is just a fancy way to put salt on the situation. Oh, oh, oh no, let's do that later. Um, air, dried shallots. And then roasted garlic. Did I put roasted garlic before? No, I don't think I did. And if I did, twice the garlic is the right amount of garlic. Like you said, I just I had a heavy hand with this in situation. And then I'm gonna do a mixture that is called menudo mix. And menudo mix is basically just chili ancho and then more pepper, sorry, more garlic, more onions, more, um, it has a little bit of cilantro, so it'll give it a little bit of kind of an herby flavor, I'm hoping. I've never done this before. Again, you just kind of put all the spices that you normally would put on, on a rub or on a, or a, basically whatever you want this thing to taste like, you know? Um, mushroom powder. Mushroom powder is fantastic and it's really great for this kind of situations. Uh, it gives it, again, it's more like, um, a lot like uh, nutritional yeast. It gives it a little bit more of an aged kind of umami flavor. It has like a nice, like a beautiful color too. So it, it actually helps with that as well. Did I put paprika in? I'm starting to forget things. Let's put some pa more paprika. Again, too much paprika is not enough paprika. All right, paprikash. All right, cool. So ratios, right? Three, like three times. So we put a, cu a cup and a half of um of this stuff so we're gonna put one cup of beet puree and then we're just gonna plop it on the overhead okay and then i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna it's not there's not that much left in here so i'm just gonna put the whole thing and it's not i'm just gonna add more so i'm just gonna finish this all right it seems like I'm gonna need a little bit more this stuff and how do I know I really don't it's gonna add on top Boop. all right all right so now comes kneading you have to knead this mixture in order to get the right texture oh oil. So kneading, uh, I've heard uh, mixed uh, things. I've heard that you have to knead it for like 20 minutes. I've heard that you have to knead it for like 40 minutes. I knead it for about three minutes and usually that's enough for me because whenever I see the texture that they want to accomplish, I get it with about three minutes of kneading. And uh, I guess the best way to do it is to actually do it here and then show you the result. I'm gonna keep this beet water next to me in case I need it. And then let's let's um, let's get our hands dirty. So basically just just uh, uh, the thing you want to do is you want to make sure that as much of the wheat gluten just kind of gets mixed in. And I've never done technically, you should be able to do wheat gluten or satan, Satan, Satan. Wheat meat. I, I don't like that name. Um, you can just do it with water and wheat gluten. Um, in the olden days, you, you could just make this meat substitutes just by like, you know, like frontiers people had like this recipe so just of doing all sorts of things with wheat. So, and you can see right now that, well, I mean, we are already in getting like all the, the wet has already been absorbed and we don't have enough uh, puree to add more. Normally you would add water, but now we're gonna add this delicious bloody, vegan bloody um, beet water. And I guess, I don't know if, if, you wanna, if we wanna combine the arts and the culinary arts too. You can actually do dyes with beets 
I don't know how to do it. I've never done it before, but I, I'm sure you can Google it. Um, there is a chance that you... So I'm gonna get on this side so we can knead together. So one of the things you have to make sure is that all of these, let's put a little bit more water, is that all of these uh, ingredients, all the spices that you put in are combined because you don't wanna, you want, and again, uh, if you wanna simplify things, just grab your, pay, your favorite rub or sauce or um, just, you know, some, oh, I'm, I think I'm gonna put a little bit of, like rub, sauce, uh, just uh, like a barbecue sauce, I'm assuming. You can cook that with, but I wouldn't recommend it to add it in this particular case just now, but just anything that is just like a spice mix that you enjoy, something that you usually use with your meats, like a, like a chicken or, and also you can do, um, some people do like uh, uh, veggie bouillons, you know? So vegetarian bouillons will, will uh, flavor this more like, a, like an actual, like the thing that is trying to substitute. So you can add that. I don't necessarily feel like I need that. I think this basically tastes really good the way it is just my, with my own kind of of the moment spice mix. So we are, you see, you, you start seeing the, how this thing just starts to become like, you're kneading, right? It's kind of a relaxing kind of situation, but you're starting to see like little strands, you know, and these little strands is what makes kind of if we are, if you see this as an exercise in creating uh, meat, it's kind of like the muscle tissue. It's kind of like what gives that bite, but it doesn't taste just like, kind of like, um, like you're eating into a piece of bread, which is basically what this is, kind of, because it doesn't have the, you know, it only has the glutens. Um, I've been asked, again, I don't want, there are no, I've been asked if you can make this gluten-free. Unfortunately, no. You, this is gluten. The, the ingredient, the main ingredient is gluten. So you can't make it gluten-free. Otherwise you just have, in this case, just puree. But if you wanna make a gluten-free kind of meat substitute, I'm sure there are solutions on the internet. Tofu, um, I think it's gluten-free. Um, so anything that you can make out of soybeans, I believe, I don't know. I'm not a dietitian, so don't, don't follow my advice. This, this should be a giant disclaimer over this video right now that says that I am not a doctor. I am not a, you know, so you should not follow my dietary advice. So you see right there, it's starting to look like, like a giant kind of a brisket, doesn't it? Uh, some people just kind of like, just, just put this in the steamer, call it a day, have a giant brisket kind of holiday dinner. Um, that would be fun, but that's not what we're doing here. Oh, oh, let's wipe that out because we don't want the countertop to stain. There you go. You do not want, this thing stains everything, so. All right, so see right now, it looks beautiful. It looks nice and, and meaty, you know, like it looks like a giant slab of meat and it smells fantastic. Um, so the next thing you wanna do is we're gonna cut this into parts. We're gonna wrap them into an aluminum foil and we're gonna steam them. And you gotta steam them for about 40 minutes. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to create the base that you're later going to turn into the, that little slab of meat. So let me grab my trusty knife. Let's go again on the overhead and then we're going to cut it. And I usually cut it in eighths. 
Um, but you can also like, I, I cut it like with a knife, but you could also like just tear it by hand, you know? And if you tear it by hand, it's gonna have like more of an organic shape, if that's what you're going for. Again, this is not gonna be like a, a flavor substitute of, um, for meat. It's not gonna taste like meat. It's gonna taste delicious, but it's just about like the shape, right? And the, so I'm, um, you know, just, if you just make like little, you know, it looks like this could be like, you know, things that you put on sandwiches. I like to make Rubens with them, with these. I will, you know, just steam them and then put them on a, in a, in a pan with a little bit of oil. And then you just kind of cook the outside of it and then you slice it real thin and then you'll see that redness inside, which looks kind of, which makes for kind of delicious Reuben sandwiches. And then you can just put the, your, your vegan Thousand Island and a little bit of um, oh, um, sauerkraut. And I like to put avocado because I put avocado in everything. It makes for a delicious, delicious sandwich. So let's keep cutting. So we have our eight pieces of meat. Again. And I like to make some small and some big because the small ones you can use for lunch, the big ones you can use for dinner. Um, so we're gonna wrap them, now we're gonna wrap them in tin foil. And so let's put that on the side. Bring some tin foil from here. Sorry about that noise. Uh, I use tin foil because you can reuse it. You can reuse it a couple of times. You can just wipe it down with your with a rag that is like soapy. Um, and then I put them in the freezer because that freezes all the germs. Again, I am not a scientist. Don't at me with that. And don't follow my advice. Um, another thing you can do is I've been looking into doing sous vide bags. Those would be re more reusable, ideally. Uh, I don't like the waste that we, we create with all this stuff. I can use these like once or twice and, and then I have to make my own, like I have to reuse something else. So I think that a sous vide bag would actually be really good. If you um, are a chef and you're watching this video, let me know if you have any ideas of how to, how to do this stuff. So now we have like our meat on this side. So we are gonna, let's pick the little one. There you go. Yeah, slap it in there. Oh, let's maybe cut it in half so we don't have as much waste. This is gonna be a tiny little lunch guy. Uh, might have to like make a cup, like a couple of these. Another thing you can do is just can, you can just cook a bunch of these and um, um, cook a bunch of these and then like just make tacos out of them or something. Just slice them real thin and then um, that will work. Oh, another thing you can do with these guys is you can actually just boil them in broth. So you can make a, like a bouillon and water mix, boil it up, and then uh, dip them in there for about 40 minutes too. And what it makes, it just makes them explode. It makes them like really big. And then you can, um, um, I like this. I like to make them like this because then they're like basically sandwich sized or single serving. And then, um, they are dense too, so um, you think they don't look like much, but you put that on a sandwich, it it'll 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 do ya. It'll it'll work for me at least. Um, and I I I can eat. Okay, so we're wrapping it. done here and you know I told you that I made a mistake I did a take one of this and it went well really well except for the dog so the dog interrupted me a couple of times which is always a delight and um, so that means that now we get twice the steaks so let me show you 
in the overhead what that looks like. So I have six there now. I'm just gonna put more of them here. They're a little small, but you know what? They'll go for a good, nice taco or two. So that's the technique and you can combine it with a lot of things. You can make this out of, you can combine it with tofu to make a little bit more of a chicken thing. You can combine it with uh, chickpea uh, flour or any other kind of flour, including um, like uh, uh, rice flour or, you know, any other kind of flour. I wouldn't recommend it just to do wheat gluten and water. I think it'll work, but it'll be tougher to work with. It, it just, you know, as you can see, like it, just with a little bit of kneading, it became tough really fast. So I don't know if that's like, I don't know, try it. Worst comes to worst is like you just made a really tough piece of meat and that wouldn't be the first time you do that probably. Um, okay, that's it. And again, once you're done, it's not done. You can eat it right away as soon as you're, it's steamed, uh, but I like to pan fry it and work it with a little bit of oil and put a little bit more spices on it. And that gives it like a nice little char on the outside. And then because we use the beets, once you start cutting it, uh, you'll get that beautiful redness in the middle. And that gives it kind of a nice meaty texture and a meaty kind of color. So if you have any questions or anything like that, I, I can answer some of them. I'm not a cook, I'm not a chef, but I know how to cook some vegan foods. Uh, my Instagram is flashing right now. Um, and I'll try to answer the questions as th that you have. I really, really appreciate you guys having me around and um, um, I will see you around. Thank you.